onto the podcast, things that are doing well. First stop, a little investment that all of us know had an incredibly good year. Gold is gold is gold, and it lasts forever, and, and you can't really tarnish it unless you melt it. This is Savneet Singh, the CEO of Gold Bullion International, and we'll hear more from him in a second. If you listen to the Planet Money podcast, you know it's been a good year for gold, right? The price of gold went from $1,400 an ounce to a high of almost $1,900 an ounce in September. The gold game looked so good that even us here at Planet Money, we couldn't resist getting in on the action. The team bought a little bit of gold for ourselves. And let me stress here, this was a little piece of gold. Our $419 only bought us a quarter of an ounce. Why did it cost so much? Because the global economy has been such a mess. And when the economy's in trouble and people are freaked out, they look for a safe place to put their money like treasuries, as we just talked about, or the Swiss franc, which we talked about in another podcast. But gold, gold, gold investors will tell you, has held its value over centuries. It's not paper, it's treasure. And when you have something like this, a physical asset worth a lot of money, one big decision is where to put it. Zurich, London, New York, Salt Lake City, Utah, and actually now Singapore. So you can pick if you want your gold vaulted with us, or we can ship it directly to your home or business. It's been a great year for companies that store gold, like Gold Bullion International. We met Savneet Singh on the 29th floor of the World Financial Center at the tip of Manhattan. So picture a well-dressed skinny guy with a turban and the shiniest, most well-groomed beard you've ever seen. Seriously, this was an amazing beard. It was beautiful. Zoe and I couldn't stop talking about it. And when we met Savneet, he was beaming. Our entire company, all we do is buy, sell, and store gold bars. You want gold? You call these guys. Gold Bullion International is a middleman. They find the gold for you, and they store it for you. You said New York, Zurich, and then Salt Lake. Why so, Salt Lake? So um, we were looking for a, a place outside of New York. So New York's a little bit polarizing to the, to the broader American population. How do you mean? Particularly on the western half of the country, they don't like, they never, didn't necessarily want all their assets stored on the east coast of America. What do people think is going to happen to their gold in New York that's not going to happen in Utah? Like, what are people nervous about? You know, I think it's personal. Pre- well, you know, we did have, you know, a terrorist attack here 10 years ago. And so I think they worry about things like that. Um, Utah, we picked because it's a bit of a neutral state and it's always had a lot of respect for private property. So it's, it's one of the few states that's never really taken property from its citizens. There is a lot of suspicion this year. That's why it's been such a good year for safe havens like gold and treasury bonds. You know, there was the unrest in the Middle East, the Europe debt crisis, the S&P downgrade. People were really interested in buying physical gold this year. The last three months were way better than the three months before that. And it's been like that for the last year. So every three months is better than the last three months. And all these people buying gold, they need a place to store it. So demand for places to store all that gold shot up. ETFs, which are funds that buy large amounts of gold and then sell shares of it to investors, they can't seem to find enough space to put their gold. Yeah. I read in the Financial Times recently that some major London banks are doubling the rates they charge for vaulting gold. London is historically the premier gold storing city. Barclays and Deutsche Bank are considering building new vaults there. There's so much demand. Singh cleared up a mystery for me, though, which is if a tiny amount of gold is so valuable. A gold the size of a piece of an iPhone is $60,000 now. The large bars you see on TV, those are 400 ounces of gold. It's about $700,000. So if you just had three of those bars on a shelf, you'd be a multimillionaire. And how is it possible that storage facilities have had so much demand that they're running out of shelf space? And he had an answer. As gold price increases, the amount of insurance you need in that vault increases. Um, and at some point, the insurance companies say, that's the most insurance we'll give you for this location. Uh, and so it's, it's rarely about space. It's about getting insurance to cover the assets that are in that space. Think about it this way. Basically, the insurance company says, I'll insure you for $10 million for this vault of gold. But if the gold becomes worth more than that, you're going to have to move some of it to a different space. Because if someone breaks into your vault... They could take all that gold out. It's just too much risk for the insurance company, so they want you to spread it out over different locations. Even though these vaults are incredibly secure, he told us about one of their vaults that's out near JFK Airport in Queens, and it just blends right into the neighborhood. It looks just like an ordinary warehouse or an ordinary apartment, except for those Brinks trucks that pull out. 
Another thing he told us was that the people who work there, they actually get weighed as you go into different parts of the vault. So if you're in, about to go into one area, they'll weigh you. And then when you come back out, you get weighed again just to make sure you didn't stuff your pockets full of gold bars. It's also been a good year for Singh personally. He used to be on Wall Street and his Wall Street friends made fun of him when he left his investment banking job and went off to the crazy gold business. They're not laughing anymore. You know, this summer was the first time since I started this business that one, my friends were actually interested in what I was doing and thought I was, wanted to ha- start hanging out with me. Again. You know, some of the guys that were, because when you start a business, it's different than when you're working on Wall Street, right? You get to go to these nice dinners, you go to these charity dinners, you live this great life and you're so young and it's entertaining. This summer was the first time that, it was, that I started re-engaging with those relationships and they were intrigued like, wow, I finally figured out why you did this and why you bet on this trend. Mom! 